A hernia is a hole, typically in the abdominal wall, which allows the contents on the inside to come out. That can sometimes be fatty tissue and often can be the intestine. This diagram here shows that there are several areas where hernias can occur, but we're going to talk about inguinal hernias, which are hernias that happen in the groin. When someone has a hernia, the most common symptom they will typically notice is a bulge. This bulge can come down into the scrotum or just push out in the uh, groin area. This type of hernia can happen in both men and women. It can cause discomfort, the most common complaint being a dull ache, particularly when something is poking through the hernia. And if the intestine were to get stuck in the hernia, it can cause severe pain. This diagram right here shows that as the intestine begins to push out, it can become trapped. Another word for that is incarcerated. When that happens, it can also cut off the blood supply to this area of the intestine, and that becomes a surgical emergency, and the term for that is strangulated. So those are reasons why we fix hernias to prevent that from happening. In addition, the, the discomfort that they cause is another reason to fix them. And then sometimes just the fact that they're there. Um, they won't get better on their own. There's no exercise you can do to get rid of them. Uh, and so the fact that they're there um, is a reason uh, to repair them. Now, what are the alternatives? Well, we can just watch them. They did a study several years ago where they took thousands of men and they divided them into two different groups. These were all men who had an inguinal hernia or a groin hernia that was not causing any symptoms. One group had surgery, the other group did not have surgery. The group that was assigned to not have surgery over the two year time period that the study was happening, about 20% of those men uh, decided to have surgery for one reason or another. So at the end of their study, they said, well, 80% of the men did not have surgery and their symptoms were no worse than those that had surgery. In other words, their life wasn't uh, more difficult. They didn't have more pain. Uh, they were able to live a pretty normal life. And so that gives evidence that if someone's not having symptoms, it's reasonable to just watch them. Uh, at the six-year mark, they published their data again, and at that point, 68% of those who were not supposed to have surgery ended up having surgery. So what that tells us is that uh, the likelihood is, over time, the hernia is going to become bothersome, or some other reason will come up uh, to have the hernia fixed. And so for most people, we recommend that it be fixed, um, but it doesn't have to be done urgently or emergently. It can be done uh, more uh, when it works well for your schedule or if you want to wait uh, for a while, that's uh, completely safe to do. Another option for treatment is wearing a truss. A truss is a belt which helps has a pad on it and helps hold the contents of the hernia in. That can help with symptoms, particularly when the hernia is uh, bulging out all of the time. That's not a good long-term treatment um, because all it does is help with symptoms unless the individual has a lot of medical problems and shouldn't have an operation because an operation would be too high risk. Then a truss can be a good way to manage those symptoms. So for most people, we recommend surgical repair. Uh, there are three different ways that we do it. There's an open approach, a laparoscopic approach, and a robotic approach. In the open approach, we make an incision in the groin and then sew in a piece of mesh. In the laparoscopic approach, we make an incision by the belly button, a couple other small incisions right below that, and then put in a little bit bigger piece of mesh and usually tack that in place um, and make sure that it's covered by the lining uh, of the abdomen called the peritoneum. 
In the robotic approach, we typically come above the belly button and then a couple incisions to the side and we go on the inside. We take down that lining or peritoneum in the abdomen and then put in a similar size mesh as to the laparoscopic approach. Sometimes we sew that in place and then we sew up that lining of the peritoneum to cover the mesh to keep it away from the intestine. All three very good repairs um, with very good results. With surgery there are some risks. Uh, there's a risk of blood clots, pneumonia, heart attack, stroke, bleeding infection. All operations carry these risks. Specific to this operation there's a risk of the hernia coming back. With mesh, that's typically less than 1%. Now, mesh sometimes gets bad press. Um, there can be complications with mesh. It can shrink, it can migrate, it can become infected. Fortunately, those complications are very uncommon, definitely less than 1%. However, the risk of a hernia coming back if mesh is not used is uh, about 84% um, higher than if mesh was used. So we definitely, definitely recommend using mesh in these repairs. There's a small risk of injury to the bowel or the bladder. That's less than 1%. There's a risk of urinary retention. That means not being able to empty the bladder. That happens more commonly in older male who have prostate issues and would require a catheter uh, for a few days. Chronic numbness or pain in the groin or leg. This happens about 6% of the time. It can happen whether mesh is used or not. It can happen in an open repair and it can happen in a laparoscopic repair. The most common thing we'll see is someone who has been not very active and then they decide to become active and they've had a previous mesh repair in their groin. As they become active, they strain the ligaments in that area where, and where the mesh is and the mesh is not quite as flexible as their normal tissue. This can cause some discomfort uh, and usually responds to ibuprofen, heat and stretching uh, and will go away. And then in males, there can be damage to the testicles or testicular function. We will sometimes see some swelling, which goes away in a couple of weeks, but it's rare to have any long-term damage. For recovery, uh, the safe approach is three to six weeks of no strenuous activity. With the minimally invasive approaches, uh, laparoscopic and robotic, um, we feel a little more comfortable about the location of the mesh and the uh, the dynamics of the repair and so most of us will allow patients to get back to more normal activities in about one to two weeks. Now in this same area there are also femoral hernias that occur. They're a little bit lower than where the inguinal hernia uh, is. In an open repair, it's a little bit different because the incision would be just a little bit lower here typically. However, in a laparoscopic or robotic repair, it's essentially the exact same operation. And so the risks and recovery, recovery would be very similar. So that's uh, inguinal and femoral hernia repair. If you have any additional questions, please be sure to ask your surgeon.